Welcome to the Real News Network and welcome to the first edition of the Lapovitsis Report with Kostas Lapovitsis, who now joins us from London, where he's a professor in economics at the School of Oriental and African Studies at the University of London. He's a regular columnist for the Guardian newspaper. His most recent book is Crisis in the Eurozone. Thanks for joining us again, Kostas. Hello, Paul. It's nice to be here with you. So we're just a few weeks away from 2013. How does this year look, this coming year? I'm afraid that it doesn't look very good at all for economies in general, for working people in particular. And uh, I want to stress that this is shaping up very badly. Um, the main source of concern is, of course, the Eurozone and the continuing crisis uh, in the Eurozone. Now, financial markets have gone quiet or quieter uh, in the last few months, couple of months, uh, and people have been lulled into thinking that the Eurozone crisis um, has been resolved. That is not actually true. The reason why financial markets have gone quieter is because in September, um, the um, Mr. Draghi of the European uh, Central Bank intervened and basically said that he was going to buy bonds of countries in trouble freely. And that made speculation against, uh, uh, against peripheral uh, Eurozone country debt unprofitable. So financial markets went quiet and uh, people began to think that the Eurozone crisis might be on its way out. Actually, it's not. Things are getting worse and worse. And if you look at um, the real economy in uh, Spain, in Portugal, um, in Italy, and of course in Greece, um, 2013 is shaping up to be a really problematic year. The phenomena that we saw in Greece in 2010, 2011, uh, are beginning to emerge uh, in Portugal, in Spain, and elsewhere. Basically, large tracts of the Eurozone um, are moving into recession, very serious recession, and that's beginning to affect the core, too. France doesn't look very healthy. Italy is very weak. So the Eurozone as a whole uh, is going to have a very bad year. And what's, what does this mean for the global economy? That is going to be, of course, uh, a source of... Um, uh, negative implications for the uh, for, for, for the world economy because the eurozone is a very large part uh, of the world economy both as a uh, as a source of demand but also um, as a source of capital uh, and so on so the, the eurozone is in is in a bad way and it will continue to be in a bad way austerity in the eurozone basically means that the entire eurozone is going to have a bad year in 2013 but that's not really the end of the story because you know, you might think, oh, there might be demand elsewhere. The world economy might pick up um, elsewhere as it has happened in the past. Well, that's not how it's shaping up. Non-Eurozone countries in Europe, including the United Kingdom, are also in a very bad shape um, and very weak economies uh, as a whole. The UK, for instance, will have a, a very bad year in 2013, a continuation of a bad year in 2012. If you look at the States, the United States, uh, things are not looking very good at all, what with the fiscal cliff and um, the continuation of an economy which is not really going anywhere. Uh, it's not really in serious recession at, at the moment, but it's not really going anywhere either. Now, some people might have, people might have thought that China or the BRICS, um, you know, the newly emerging countries in, uh, in Southeast Asia or in Latin America and so on, might be, might be able to uh, pick up the slack. Well, that's not the case. China is slowing down very fast. Its model of expansion and rapid growth uh, appears to be uh, hitting some um, serious uh, difficulties. Uh, so it's slowing down. And China was never really a major um, source of demand for developed economies uh, across the world anyway. And, develop, and other developed countries, uh, developing countries, uh, are having difficulties themselves. Brazil has got very weak growth. Turkish grow, growth is not doing anything very much. So altogether, if you add it up, you will see that um, there is no part of the world economy that looks positive and promising for 2013. With the Eurozone in the trouble in which it is, and the rest of the world economy shaping up in the way in which it is, 2013 is going to be a difficult year. You're very involved in, in the events in Greece and how the crisis is affecting Greece, and you're, you're going back and forth. Uh, what's happening in Greek politics now? Greece will be badly affected by 2013 being a bad year, and which is one of the reasons why I, I wanted to, to, to mention that, because the Greek economy has had five years of um, very serious recession. Um, 2013 is going to be a bad year for the world economy. 
Um, the Greek government has just agreed uh, a new bout of cuts, uh, severe austerity to be imposed on the country uh, next year. Uh, this looks very, very risky uh, for Greece altogether. It looks as if the um, economy will be uh, in very deep trouble in 2013, on top of the trouble it's had so far. I mean, uh, just to give you a sense, unemployment in Greece, in Greece has just reached 26%. Uh, that's the late, these are the latest figures released uh, yesterday. 26%. This is overall unemployment. Uh, this is adult, unemployment. What's, adult yeah, what's, unemployment. what's the number on youth unemployment? Youth unemployment is well over 55%. So Greece is heading for 30% unemployment next year. Uh, if the world economy has indeed a very tough year uh, next year, as I think it will, then the situation is beginning to look very serious for Greece, uh, indeed, given the austerity uh, that the government has imposed on the country additionally, on top of all the, uh, all the rest of the problems the country is facing. So the economic situation is very bad. The social situation is getting worse and worse as tensions are rising and uh, people are finding it very hard to make ends meet. The political situation uh, is therefore developing very, very rapidly itself. Now, interesting things have happened the last um, week or so in Greece. Um, the left is beginning to emerge as a serious government um, opposition. Uh, the Syriza party, which has been leading the um, uh, opposition to the government, this is the official opposition, um, has had um, a conference, its first conference really, and it's in the process of becoming a proper party because it wasn't really a party as such, it was a coalition, an alliance. It's now in the process of becoming a proper party. Uh, there's lively debate, people are joining it, um, and it is promising um, to deliver uh, radical action. Now, within that party, within the Syriza party, there, is, um, there, there, are, there are opposing currents, it has to be said. Um, uh, there is a strong left-wing current, which is well expressed. Uh, there are also more conservative, more social democratic um, currents within it, um, and they are probably dominant in the leadership. So it's going to be a lively um, battle within Syriza about um, economic policy, about social policy, about the direction in which uh, the country might be taken if and when Syriza uh, takes over. And that is not um, too far off in the future, maybe. If 2013 turns, turns out to be a bad year, then Syriza might be called upon um, to take over. Um, so we will see serious uh, political change uh, in Greece and therefore uh, in much of the rest of um, Europe. Called upon, meaning if the if the current coalition government collapses, would that, there be an election, or Syriza would actually be asked to form the next government? No, no. In all probability, there will be an election. But uh, the, the current coalition government is very weak uh, in any case. And if the economic situation unfolds badly next year, and I think it will, uh, then then the the coalition government uh, will probably not last there will be elections, and if there are elections, then in all probability, Syriza will be the, the, the top party uh, with an outright majority, or at least the party that will be called upon to form the government. Now, we've talked about this before, but Syriza, if they do form the government, is going to face a, a fairly big decision if they, want to, if they want to bail on the bailout as written and try to renegotiate, they'll be in direct confrontation with European finance and politics. But that's why I said that the events in the last week are quite uh, some importance because Syriza is beginning to uh, uh, to become a proper party organization. Uh, the, the, the internal debate within Syriza has now become public. It's now clear that there are different currents and different views within Syriza. There's a strong left-wing current within uh, Syriza which wants a very radical position on uh, the debt. What is that radical position? The radical position is basically to... Uh, to um, insist on uh, abandoning the bailout strategies, lifting austerity, saying no to, um, to, to more austerity and, and, and the bailout strategies, uh, refusing to pay the debt and demanding a radical reduction of the debt. And if it comes to um, uh, leaving the euro, if the price of that is to leave the euro, then so be it. But you're saying that the, the uh, dominant force within the party does not take that position? The dominant force does not take this position. The position it takes is that, yes, we will say no to the bailout. We will take a radical position on the debt, although not as radical as the left of Syriza, maybe. 
uh, but the dominant position is that we will do all that within the euro. Um, uh, there is a debate within the organization. There are different views. Uh, it's actually quite comradely so far. It's not as if it's falling apart, um, but it's a lively debate. And it's the only place in Greek society where this vital issue for Greece is being debated openly. That's a service given to an offer to Greek society. Syriza is offering it a major service that it is discussing these things openly and in terms that most Greek people understand. Um, and that's where the future lies. Now, if Syriza takes over next year, and as I say, there's every chance that he might be called upon to form the government and delivers, delivers radically and delivers well, then things might begin to improve for Greece if it does what it says. If it doesn't, then things can uh, unfold very badly. If it proves itself to be unprepared for government, or if it doesn't do what it said it would do, if it buckles, then then the future does look very bleak because then we might have um, strong right wing uh, strong right wing turn. We might have even a fascist turn in Greece, uh, and that won't be very good news for the country, and it won't be very good news for Europe either. All right. Thanks for joining us, Kostas. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us on the Real News Network. Thank you.